we've got our first our first podium of the the day and our top three finishers from today's mission super hooligan national championship round here at daytona international speedway our winner tyler o'hara second place bobby fong and third place jeremy mcwilliams uh, we'll start with Jeremy down there at the end. Jeremy, uh, you seem to like coming to Daytona, and we're really glad to have you back for this year. And you get to ride the hooligans the entire year. How, how, tell us a little bit about that race. I know you had to beat Corey West there at the end. Yeah, I completely messed up. My own fault. I left the pit lane limiter on at the start line. Uh, something we need to look at how to maybe avoid that. But so I nearly got swallowed up by the group. And then, I mean, it was a lot of fun coming through, but it's been a lot of more fun if I'd been with these two guys. So I, I'm happy to take a podium away from it, but tomorrow's got to be different. You know, I think we need, we, we all look like we're on the same page and kind of same pace. Any, any one of the three can win. So I just hope I can make amends tomorrow. And that's the beauty of having two. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and it's, it's a much busier year this year. Obviously this year, this weekend is, is the busiest weekend. I think I can remember in my racing career for, Many, many, many years. I don't even think I've been this busy with five races. So uh, let's keep this all on our toes. Uh, we're losing a little bit of water, but, but it's fun. All right. Well, good job. Second place today, Bobby Fong. It's his first ever hooligan race. So even though he might complain, it's not too much to complain about considering it's his debut. You, I guess, got daytona there at the end. I mean, it looked like you had the speed and you just did that. Yeah, I mean... You tell us about it. I know you had a little lapper issue at the on the last lap from the chicane. No, it was a, it was a good race, man. I mean, I it was hard because you just never know, you know. Like you could lead the thing into the last corner, and you could roll off the throttle, and then you could roll off too much, and then the second person's way far down the road. So you just you just got to race as hard as you can, as fast as you can, and whatever happens happens. And it's Daytona. I'm happy to be on the podium, and uh, happy that we got another shot tomorrow. But Got a different strategy tomorrow. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? But at the end of the day, we're uh, we're riding good. The bike feels good, and uh, just looking forward to tomorrow. All right, thank you. Our winner today, Tyler O'Hara. He's the defending class champion. Not a bad way to start your season in defense of your title. Did you uh, did you have that plan? I mean, were you just kind of sitting where you thought you needed to be? It was uh, it was a good race, you know. Bobby had really good pace all weekend. That was the first time we got to ride together, and uh, he had a really clean, open track. And I was in the back, learning, and made a few mistakes myself. And he gapped me, and I was able to reel him back in. And then the lapper there um, through the chicane definitely played a big role. I don't know if I was going to be able to draft past him on the finish. He basically broke the draft, so. It was uh, it was a good race, man. Just to, you know, sweep the podium, Indian motorcycle. I mean, that's a, that's a huge for for Indian motorcycle. All of our sponsors, Progressive, uh, come on board this year and Mission Foods. Everybody, Parts Unlimited. To win at Daytona, it's special, man. Just coming here, it's it's an amazing feeling, and just uh, really enjoying it, having fun, and and really just continuing to develop these motorcycles. It's a lot of fun. You like being this busy? Yeah, that's what I live for. <laughs> Any questions? We've got our top three finishers from today's Revit Twins Cup race here at Daytona International Speedway. Our winner today for the first time in the class, Gus Rodeo. Second place, Jackson Blackman. And third place, Hayden Schultz. Uh, we'll get started with Hayden. Hayden, you won a race here last year, third today. Um, you obviously like Daytona. Is it rough for you? I, I think I heard you coming in here that like you're a little bigger than the other guys. Is it is it hard to push that much wind? Is it hard to draft? Is it harder? It's yeah, for sure. It's tough. I definitely have uh, some weight on these guys and it's, it's not for lack of effort. I spent all winter, uh, training pretty hard. I'm just so, you know, stocky and, and muscle bound that it's, it's hard, man. And I've got broad shoulders. So I push a lot of wind and, um, that definitely makes it a challenge at a track like this. And, and you know, last year we came in and our, our, our bike was fast. I think we had a little bit of an advantage and played it right, came home with the wind, but you know, I showed up this year and I saw how fast we were going. Like, Dude, these guys in, in practice one were going faster than last year. So I was like, okay, we were, you know, last year was, it, it's weird because it's Daytona and you're playing with the draft. So last year, honestly, through the infield, it was almost more of like a processional. It was like a parade. It wasn't nearly as fast paced. You didn't really have to push. You're just kind of sitting there in the draft. And, and this year, uh, you know, Gus has been hauling the mail from the get go. Same with even Stefano jumping on the bike, doing an incredible job. Uh, 
and then Dominic, you know, all these guys have been riding so fast. And so I'm like, okay, we've got some, some work to do. So win is going to be really difficult to come away with. Uh, but also last year I crashed out of a race. So also in my head is like, let's, let's see what we can come away with. If we can come away with a couple podiums or at least just one and just stack some points for the rest of the year, that's, uh, that's really what I'm going for. So, um, I was just trying to play it smart. And I know Blake, it looked like he was struggling with chatter later in the race. And I started to struggle with a, a couple minor front end issues as well. And so at that point, Point. Um, I knew that there was only a couple of us towards the front, so I didn't really have to uh, worry about, you know, if I brought it home, it wasn't going to be bringing it home in seventh or eighth. It was going to be, you know, in the top five. So that's kind of what was the plan after that. Uh, Gus was just too quick for us today, truthfully. So um, didn't have anything to go uh, fight for the win. You know, once we lost that draft a little bit, once I had a couple couple moments, because um, Blake and Gus at the beginning there were, were going really quick. We lose that, and, and you know, but we're still fighting for a podium. So to come away with that, uh, get a good draft at the end there, and you know, top three, it's it's uh, it's perfect. So all right, thank you. Second place today, Jackson Blackman, who doesn't push a lot of weight. Um, Jackson, it's your first race back from your bad ankle injury, and you're on the podium. I know you. It's been a while since you've been on the podium, so it's got to feel good. I mean, that was a case of really not giving up because when those guys crashed in front of you, you had to slow down and and the leaders were gone and you put your head down and kept charging. Was that, you'd, was that a, just a never give up attitude? Yeah. You know, I just, um, and you know, it's very unfortunate that, uh, that Dominic had went down, you know, and I hope that he's all right. Um, uh, it's just one of those racing things. I was kind of thinking of hanging around the back of the pack and, um, and then something like that happened. And so instantly the, the draft was gone, but I knew that it wasn't going to help anything to just um, relax and to fall into that rhythm and just kind of say that they're gone. I was determined to try to make a push. And if anything were to happen, just know that, see how close I could get. Um, If anything else, uh, if anybody were to lose some pace later in the race, um, and that's just kind of how it ended up going. I think I actually set some of my best laps by myself, just charging through the infield. Uh, I've been working, uh, really hard over this weekend with the team and with k-tech um on the bike setup and i think we finally nailed on the head and it, the bike just seemed to work better and better the deeper i was going in uh to the horseshoes and so we're able to to just get on the back of those guys just in time and then blake ended up coming to us um on that last lap and just tried to play a good move there at the end um but it just feels so great to be back i mean it's been uh it was like six months of almost no walking and uh, about eight months to nine months of full recovery. Um, and so I'm just so stoked to be up here on the podium, first race back. And um, we're going to try to have something to fight with Gus tomorrow. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> Our winner today, Gus Rodeo, as I mentioned earlier, it's his first uh, win in the uh, Revit Twins Cups class. Uh, I know you worked hard this winter. We watched all the Supermoto videos. You hung out with uh, Brandon Posh and, whatever you were doing, it looks like it's paid off. Did, did you, I know you probably expected to win at some point. Did you expect to win in the first race of the year? Uh, I didn't really know what to expect coming in here. Um, there was a lot of unknowns. Of course, it's the first race of the year. My first race in the class, uh, since last year at Daytona. So, um, yeah, I've been training with Brandon. Um, he's like my big brother and it's a, it's really cool to have somebody like that, that I can just go out and, and stay at the house, spin laps and, and really learn something from him. I'm always chasing him. So, um, I'm really happy. I can't, I can't ask for anything more. Uh, my rodeo racing Robin Aprilia feels like incredible. I've never really felt a bike that I just click with. And I just feel like I'm, I'm one with this motorcycle right now. And obviously that makes me happy. So I'm having fun, uh, while I'm riding and I can put together clean laps and, and just stay consistent by myself and, and just stay focused throughout the race. I mean, nobody wins here by 8.5 seconds. It just doesn't, it's not the norm. It That's got to take a lot of stress out when you're not worried about somebody drafting by at the finish line. Yeah. I've never raced. I mean, I've raced a Daytona probably six times now, but I've never raced a Daytona and not had somebody that you know, could draft me to the line. So to just be out there by myself is super new to me and I'm used to racing the 400. So at any track, you're not getting away. So it is really cool to pull away here and, um, and to win that way. All right. Any questions? Yeah, I just have one for Gus. So Gus, your uh, bike 
from for this year? Is it completely different than the bikes you had last year? Yeah. So last year we can we ha- bought an Aprilia. Um, we built it ourselves and, um, we came to the races, but this year, uh, Robin, I'm on a Robin engineering Aprilia, um, the tubo suspension, um, and everything like that. So I'm, I'm not on our bike from last year. I'm on their, their complete bike. All right, guys. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. We've got our top three finishers from today's mission. King of the baggers here at Daytona international speedway. Our winner, James Raspoli, second place, Hayden Gillum and third place, Tyler O'Hara. We'll get started with Tyler. Uh, first of all, you can explain what happened to cause you from having to start at the back. And second part of that is, did you kind of know you were hosed when you had to start back there? Yeah. First question, you know, we just miss it. Uh, we're having some communication issues. Uh, the schedule is late, I feel like, and we just missed it. No excuses. Um, you know, starting from in the back kind of, uh, uh, not ideal, obviously, you know, I was pretty fired up for a minute, but I had to calm down and just, uh, do my best and, uh, let the race come to me and, you know, the, just really, uh, I'll take it. I'll take it. It's, uh, anytime you get up here on the podium at Daytona, it's very special and, and, uh, our team works really hard. Our bike is very fast and, and reliable and, you know, it's going to be a long championship. So just finishing races and just being on the podium is, uh, it's good. I'll take it. All right. Thank you. Second place today, Hayden Gillum. Hayden also had a mechanical issue, but fortunately it was on the cool down lap. Uh, it's your first battle or your first podium in the class. Tell us a little bit about that battle. And, and I think you were behind James when he had his moment. Yeah, it's not, I've, I've had two podiums. I, I, oh, I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm an original bagger. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so deep. Uh, no, uh, it was, it was, it was a lot of fun. Honestly, after the bagger challenge race, I, uh, you know, during the practice, you, it's hard to tell, especially here, who's got what underneath the woman. Uh, so in the challenge, you know, I actually, I got a, my start, I left the pit limiter on. So I kind of got to watch everybody at the start and, uh, it was, it actually helped me a little bit getting a bad start. Cause I was able to learn a little bit and watch, uh, what Travis was doing, what James was doing, what Tyler was doing. And, uh, yeah, I was, I was happy after that race. And so for the start of this one, I just, I knew, I knew I could do it. I knew I had this, the pace to go with them. It's, it's a little tough around here. These bikes, uh, they're, they're big old bikes around this place. So it's, it was a lot of fun. You know, yesterday was my first day back on the bike and to end up second on uh, day one is pretty, pretty dang sweet. Now you mentioned that you're OG in this class, the, how the bikes come a long way since the first time you rode it. Yeah, it's come a long ways. But that <laughs> it was when you do was, one lap at a time, right? Back then, uh, uh, we still had the, the foot pegs up in front of me. Like I was, I, I mean, I was relaxed on the thing. I was out for a Sunday cruise and now they're, they're race bikes. Now I was dragging everything back then. And, and now, you know, I haven't, I haven't hardly drug anything, even my knee. And, uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it's a lot of fun. These things got so much more power now and, uh, you know, they don't flex as much as what they used to. They still move around a ton. They're, I mean, 630 pound motorcycles and, uh, yeah, it's, it's a ton of fun. I'm glad to be back with Vance and Hines. Uh, it's last year. I, I, I kind of hated a little watching it cause I, I decided to back away from it. And, uh, now I'm just, I'm glad to be back. All right. Thank you. Our winner today, James Raspoli, unless he corrects me, this is his first win in the class. No, this is the first win. Yeah. <laughs> Good job today. And I think first of all, you got to tell us, you know, like, did you think you were done with over there or did you see it coming out the way that it did? Man, dude, like I saw my life flash like twice and then it just kept going and I was like, maybe I'll get out of it. And it just kept going all the way up to banking. And I don't know, man, I summoned like all the energy from my ancestors to keep that one going straight. So, (laughs) but at the end of the day, uh, to be honest, it was, it was a really funny race. Um, you know, once we saw Tyler and Jeremy not on there, we were game plans always to race hard, but uh, a little different because the Harleys are, you know, react the same way. Um, so we, me and Hayden were just clicking off laps, passing each other in good spots. We, I think we figured out where he was strong, where I was strong and we just made it work. And um, to be honest, like it's a shame to see both factory bikes, Harleys go out, but 
I kind of feel like we were tracking him down a little bit in some areas. Um, maybe he was just blowing up. I don't know. But I feel like me and Hayden did a phenomenal job of just working together. And you got to do that here at Daytona. And then, you know, both me and Hayden started making quite a bit of mistakes out there, running wide and stuff. And I was just hoping nobody else would catch up. I saw some people coming and Travis got in there with us and he had a little bit of a moment. Thank, thankful that he he's super solid and rolled, got right off the line. Uh, but Dude, I'm just stoked, right? Like Vance and Hines has, has worked their butts off this off season, and I, we go out in FP1, and if we're slow a mile an hour, it's all forgotten, and it can't be. You know, these guys work so hard. Um, we're in the fight, and yeah, we might not have the mile an hour, but we lasted, and we got one, two. It's the first for the team in Baggers, and I'm super proud of the team and my teammate, and you know, we we'll just keep going. And uh, Terry, just get the red numbers out because we got the red plate, baby. <laughs> when kyle blew up in front of you is that pretty scary i mean you're in a section where there's some corners or, or kyle uh, kyle <clears throat> kyle was not so bad what was scary is is we started smoking for a while and i saw hayden he kept racing like he was like i'm catching you <laughs> and i was like and i was like a little bit more reserved but uh we were moving left and when he was right we were running on different lines we you know we're, we're pretty smart and i knew he was on the same kind of game plan as me as not follow the smoke. So, but it's a bummer. And the real one that was scary for me was Travis. Cause he just came by through the chicane and I was literally going to just follow him in and try to draft back by and just keep the leapfrog going. But, um, yeah, that one was pretty scary. Cause we were both at the top of the bank and I didn't really have anywhere to go, but he moved left right away. So super thankful for Travis for being, for being awesome. All right. Any questions? Yeah, I got two for James and, and I guess you got either of you can answer or both. So the fact that you are both on the same motorcycle and you had a similar issue, the tank slap or whatever you want to call it, is that just a coincidence that you're on the same bike? I think, I mean, you guys have a reel of Kyle doing it out of there too. So I think it's, I mean, I think Tyler will even say it's slick out of the turn six. Like everybody's feeding it on. And I mean, that's really the big start for the run to the chicane. And if you get out of there bad, man, and you don't have the beans, like you're, your race is over because if you can't make it up in, in the chicane, like you got like what, 10 seconds around the bank until turn one. And it's, it's a bad day. So you kind of have to get out of there. Well, and I think everybody's just learning the new tire and the side and you know, these bikes, I mean, we're going what 10 mile an hour faster than we did last year. So everyone's just kind of feeding in and figure it out. So, okay. You know, and Hayden, let me ask you a second part of that. So I noticed more of you than anybody else when that happened for people like mere mortal riders like us and not like you guys, you kind of got up out of the seat. Is that what you do when you have a situation like that? Lighten the bike a little bit somehow? Um, like it's, it's better to get on your toes, on your feet, just cause your legs can add as like act as suspension too. So okay. it's easier just to kind of get up. And then, you know, also where I did it coming out of, out of one, it was right into that chicane. So I was already needing to kind of flip the bike back. So it just kind of worked out that, uh, like where James was trying to continue going left, I was able to kind of ride, like roll with the, the flicks and, and make it come back into, into, into line. Okay. Thanks.